how many times you get a discount to buy the wide receiver connected to Patrick Mahomes that helped them win a Super Bowl the previous year? I, sure. I'm not sure you'll ever have that again without legal issues. <laughs> without legal issues. What, uh, with no legal you know issues. You know I mean? right. so as I long think, as the guy is buying Papa John's I, I, pizza. I, I, thank you for the pizza, but <laughs> I really appreciate it. We're back with another edition of Buy, Sell, Hold. Come on. We'll talk through four of the most controversial, high profile, question mark names in Dynasty and whether we are buying, selling, or holding. First time we did this video, we talked about Jalen Waddle, Kyron Williams, Kyle Pitts, and Trevor Lawrence. That was before the extension. Hey, let's go, Trevor. Um, <laughs> go but four of the most high profile names, all right? Yeah. The first name we're going to be discussing today, Badaki, oh boy. is uh, you know, <laughs> we've been on two opposite <laughs> sides of the street, so this will be interesting. Yep. Devon a Chan. Once A Chain would have been so cool if he stayed A Chain. The yeah. amount of names you could have given. Anyway, could Devon A Chan. Right now, I'm a little bit surprised to be honest that he is the RB six on K on KTC. Yeah. He is the RB six on Flock Fantasy. Yeah, I saw that. Where as do well. you have him ranked? I have him as my RB eight. Yeah, I have him RB eight as well. Uh, okay, so yeah. we we might be on a similar page there. As of right now, baseline community value if you haven't done your 24 draft the 108 mm -hmm. in a super flex league mm -hmm. or an early to mid first in 2025 so based off of that information you and i have to make the, de the decision but are we buying selling or holding so okay let me know here what are you doing in three two one Oh, okay. Okay, Let's so go. we're on the same page. We're on the same page there. All right, so we're both a hold. So why are yeah. you holding him then? Uh, look, as much as I... I thought you would be a sell. Uh, look, I thought you'd be a sell. As you much set me as, up there a little bit. Am I? No, as much as I want to come on here and say, sell, 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 Devon and Chain, I'm not sure I'm ever going to win that battle in the community. I, I, and, I think you would, though. And, like, and look, the reason why is because I think the good outweighs the bad tremendously okay but i would say this and i put this in my notes i'm holding but also listening actively listening to offers okay because sure. by no means to me devonna chain is a buy at any point in time right now in this video as rb6 i think sure, that is like that hard is to buy crazy. in at that price point that yeah, is it, absolutely it's tough crazy. To get much much higher than that look I'm, I'm actually surprised. I thought you'd be a sell you know we did our cornerstone running back rankings video recently mm -hmm. and a lot of people were with you with the notion that, like, you know, Devon Achan, what if he's not, you know, this efficient? What if he doesn't get a higher amount of volume? Mm -hmm. You know, I actually went through Badaki, and I had a look at his touches in the games where he played at least 30% of the snaps. Okay. And those are the games where he wasn't injured. In those games, look at the touches he's getting. As a rookie, by the way, fresh fresh meat off the street, fresh right? Fresh meat, yep. Uh, pause. Uh, 22 <laughs> touches in week three. Then 13, 12, 21, 16, 12, 10, 19, 11. In games where he is healthy, he's averaging over 15 touches per game. For reference, Jameer Gibbs had just under 17 last year. My question is, like, I get the concerns around injury. I get the concerns around, like, can he repeat that efficiency? Well, probably not because we want him to get more touches. And more touches means maybe less efficiency. That's just the natural way around it. But on a per snap basis... There was nobody more valuable in fantasy last year. Like it, it wasn't even close. Devon Achan was number one on a per snap basis. Like, what could he do sure. if he does get more involved in the offense? I just think like and I think that's, that is you're sending someone away who could sure. break fantasy. But that that's 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 the risk, right? Because I, I th hear you. Th there's two concerns that I have. Pros brought. cons list you gotta make. Uh, yeah, right. The, the the two concerns that I have is injuries, like you already mentioned. I mean, He's already a smaller back, even though we kind of excluded, you know, these smaller players. They're more prone to injury. And you saw, you can see like the little glimpses of where he just misses pockets of the season, but is so efficient when he's on yeah. the field. I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, I think the projected opportunities and the projected efficiency, even if, let's just say this, going into next year, he's not as efficient, but he finishes as RB in the round, you know, RB 12 to 17 range. You drafted him at an RB6 price, according to the community right now, which I think yeah. it's absurd. So the price right now for the expected value that I'm projecting for him to, him to come back and return, I think it's too much. But the reason why he is a hold right now is because if he does hit, you're like, oh, damn. I, you know, yeah. like, it's like he, he can break fantasy. I, I, I almost feel like RB6 feels like a fake price to me. I, I don't want to like look like K, KTC mm -hmm. has millions of data points. We have a lot of data points as well on the flock. Well, I was surprised rankings. when we it was RB six on our 
site. It just feels, yeah, it just feels like a, a fake ranking to me. Like, I feel like RB, like, 6 to 10 are changeable right now in most people's minds. Sure, sure. Um, but you did bring up, like, okay, yeah, what if he gets injured? I just want to encourage people and, like, remind people that, uh, hey, guess what? Every running back is going to get injured Mm -hmm. at some point. Like, you're playing the most dangerous position that gets injured the most on offense. If you don't want any players to get injured on your team, then sell all of your running backs. I mean, look at last year alone, right? Running backs to miss four or more games in 2023. Nick Chubb, 227 pounds. Jonathan Taylor, 226 pounds. Josh Jacobs, 223 pounds. James Conner, 233 pounds. J.K. Dobbins, Aaron Jones. So... I get where people are coming from. Like, I totally understand it, but you got to weigh out the say, pros and cons, I guess. This guy I, I could break it. fantasy. Uh, and, and the last thing I would say is that I was really trying to find, I went all the way, I was going through every single year, and I was trying to find a guy that was as efficient and came back the next year and was a top eight running back, or it was efficient like that and it was a top eight running back. There's no one that I can find that was as efficient in the past as the Von A chain and is going to, and has this price point. As a, mm-hmm. And it is getting drafted as a top eight running back. So, yeah. once again, I'm actively listening. I'm actively saying, or, you know, saying, hey, uh, uh, I, there's another running back that I like. You have Saquon. I'd rather, I rather have Saquon. Would you like Devon? He says no. Sure. I'm happy to still keep and hold. But I think if I can pivot to a, a Jonathan Taylor, a Travis Etienne, a Saquon Barkley, mm-hmm. a Jonathan Brooks plus some, I think those yeah. are the guys that kind of fall in that range that I feel more confident. And like you sure. mentioned, bigger backs that have gotten injured, Saquon's on that list, yeah, right? But exactly. you're, but like, you are more the conf- of the position. You're just more confident in the overall opportunities that yeah. Saquon Barkley is going to get because I'm not necessarily sure coming into next year if it if we're in the same position once again and Devon has averaging 12 touches a game and is still efficient but finishes outside the top 12 i'm not excited for that i want a guy that's sure. going to be getting well, let, all the let's opportunity let's play let's play this world out okay let's say Devon A Chan last year uh in one year's time we're we're looking back finishes the RB10 he had a top 10 season but he missed four games do you think his value decreases or he's less valuable Maybe not like look at the ranking particularly, but like what he's costing right now in the trade market for picks. I don't think he drastically changes his value. I, I still think yeah, he I, will be I think there's a lot of valuable. I would say a lot of context does come with that, right? You know, uh, how much did Jalen Wright get in the opportunity? Did, did we well, see Jalen Wright, you know, take more? I'm really glad you brought that up because just like w- one thing I'll just say quickly is mm-hmm. people are making an assumption that he won't be as efficient as he was last year. Okay. Sure. But they're also making the assumption that Jalen Wright's going to be good. They're mm-hmm. and, and I like Jalen Wright. They're mm-hmm. making the assumption that Raheem Mostert's going to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. They're making the assumption that if Raheem Mostert goes down, that Jalen Wright will step right in. And and they're also making the assumption that Devon Achan won't at some point lead this backfield this year, because all those things are possibilities. But people are sure. only only assuming one thing, a hundred percent cemented into their mind, which is that he's not going to be as efficient as he was last year. So. Mm. Anyway, Look, both both a hold. Yeah, both a hold at the moment, but actively listening. If I can get one of those guys, like I mentioned earlier, I'm happy to move off of Devon, but I'm not selling him for anything lower than the market price at the moment. All right, moving on to the next player. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about polarizing names that are controversial, there's not a bigger one right now than Rasheed Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been notoriously known as a Rasheed Rice guy. I've been in his corner, even when no one else has, and I stay in his corner, but we'll talk about that. On KTC, he's the wide receiver 33. On our community, the wide receiver 48, our community is out on Rasheed Rice, from what it sounds like. Yeah. I have him ranked as my wide receiver 29. Where do you have him? I have him as my wide receiver, uh, similar to Keytrade Cut, 30. 30. Okay. Wide receiver 30. 30. (laughs) Yes, I was going to say 33 as I read it, but yes, wide receiver 30. His trade value right now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that there's like a very good baseline because I think he is a very volatile asset at, at this very moment. Yeah, um, and I think that's, so that's the hardest part right now, I would, I would in, say. In every league, he's going to cost a little bit differently. But I'd say mm-hmm. like a happy medium ground for a lot of people is probably like the 203 in a super flex draft this year. Mm-hmm. Um, that's if you haven't done your drafts. But in the future, I think you'd have to send like a late first or an early second plus something to get him in a future draft at this moment so the question is 
with the additions of Hollywood, with the addition of Xavier Worthy in round one, the extension of Travis Kelsey. Are you buying, selling, or holding? Let me know here in... Let me see. I can see it here. Three, <laughs> two, one. You're oh, buying. no! Okay, so I am selling. And... Uh, look, Damn, you just broke my heart. Uh, uh, and I thought about this for a long time. I really did. Because... Currently, right now, and I, once again, I wrote this. Currently, right now, I am selling, but it has to be for the right price. I'm not getting a low bull for Rasheed Rice, and that may be like it kind of defeats the purpose of the video. Are you selling right now? I'm selling. I'm actively selling, making sure that I'm going to get the right value. Wide receiver okay. 48 in the Flock Fantasy community, I think, I do believe is a little bit too low. But I, I, I do well, see. Let, let's play that price point then. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you sell him for a late 25 first? I think I would because I'm not necessarily sure if there's going to be a huge difference in his price next year. Okay. If he hypothetically he misses the six games that are the four to six games he's going to be suspended and he finishes within the top 30 of the wide receivers, that's not a price difference. But if he finishes a top 12, that's a completely different conversation. And so I, that's the thing. I actually think there is a chance that he improves his value drastically. Mm -hmm. um, let's say he suspended. Let's meet in the middle. You said six. I'm thinking four. Let's say five. Sure. Let's say he suspended five games and, you know, Xavier Worthy is dropping some balls or maybe he's not living up to expectations. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm, I'm just playing that scenario. Sure, sure. And playing the like, scenario, oh, yeah. Okay, this is, you know, he. we love the guy, but still a little bit to learn. Maybe Jameson Williams type of strides, even though Xavier Worthy is, is in a different class as a route runner than Jameson coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Just just here I'm coming. Let's, let's play that scenario out. Sure. Xavier's struggling a little bit. Hollywood, you know, Hollywood's always good for a couple drops to begin the year. Uh, and then, you know, around week five, they're like, you know what? I, it's, it's feeling pretty damn good in getting Rasheed Rice back into this lineup. I think there's a scenario, mm -hmm. if you look at from when he's suspended to back on the field on a points per game basis, that he's like a top 15 play from that point onwards. And the reason being is because if, if you remove the off-field issues, there's oh, nothing yeah. on the field that you shouldn't be obsessed with this guy about. Like, mm -hmm. As a as a rookie versus all Chiefs rookie wide receivers all time, he was third in targets, first in receptions, second in receiving yards, second in receiving touchdowns, and he's connected to the best quarterback of our generation. So Look, uh, I feel like if you I, remove the off-field stuff, which, by the way, most of the time if you bet on a player who has off-field issues, like there's a high percentage chance that that's a that good bet Sure, based right. off what we've seen last you know last 10 years in the NFL. And, and I think – I genuinely believe that this offense is most likely going to be another three-headed monster that we don't know who's going to be. You know, the Nico Collins Diggs tanks, the uh, Jackson sure. Smith DK and Tyler Lockett. And Rasheed Rice is, I guess, the second youngest player on this team where he was a league winner in the second half of the season. I think there is more. And he's already done it. He's already done what he, you're he, hoping sure. Worthy will do. He, he, he is. He, he has. And... I think coming in now, there is more competition because last year we had, I mean, it was Travis Kelsey who was on a down year and then Rasheed sure. Rice. Katarius Tony was nowhere to be seen. Sky Moore was nowhere to be seen. And they get more depth because they needed it. They needed somebody else. And it's, if we expect Travis Kelsey to have a bump up again, since after a down, or not a bump up, but a little bit of a better year after a down year with the, with the, the expectations of Hollywood Brown with the expectations, I guess the lower tier expectations of Xavier Worthy, Rasheed Rice, he will be getting those targets, but it's not going to be as consistent as I'm protect, um, I'm projecting currently going to the season. So yeah. I, I'm not necessarily thing, like, worried about the off-field issues. I'm actually more worried about the overall team as a whole now. And if I'm willing okay. to go out and get where I, I potentially be, project a wide receiver one in the future, I would understand that if he was like ranked as like the wide receiver twenty four or something in Dynasty right now, but he's 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 already at a discount the way I'm viewing it. I sure. mean, we we keep asking like, could Hollywood be the guy this year? Uh, could Xavier be the guy because they just drafted him? Rasheed Rice was already the guy like from from week nine onwards after their bye week. Mm -hmm. The dude was the wide receiver nine. He was averaging seventeen points per game, and I get it. Like, there's more bodies around him now, but. He, like, developed into the guy in front of our eyes. How many years have we been waiting for someone to do that in Kansas City since Tyreek left? I think... Man, if Sky Moore could do... Oh, he's not doing it on the field. It, well, they traded for Kader... If Kadarius could do it on the... What about Justin Ross, man? You got to stash him. <laughs> I mean, Rasheed Rice... 
Or she writes uh, as like the hidden treasure we've been waiting for, and now we don't want the treasure no more. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, and, I, and, I don't understand it. And, and the and, reason I am not as hesitant to sell is because if you think about the value, which I know this may sound crazy, at his peak, he was wide receiver 21 before everything. And that's kind of where I believe his value is a little bit right, right. I mean, that's a late first to a mid first. Specifically, we're looking at 2025. That is not that big of a jump because that late first is already a risk that, you know, w w we say this all the time. When you do trades, you're hoping that this late first is going to beat out its projected value. And if that is the case, and obviously that's a big hypothetical with all trades that you do, even if it's an early or mid first, mm. I, I think I'm more excited of the potential just resetting and getting another wide receiver, whether that's a first or some of these players that you can potentially pivot to, well, than Rasheed Rice say, at the moment. I think the community is telling you with their actions in the last year that his ceiling is higher than wide receiver 21. I mean, if you look on Keep Trade Cut, his most valuable um, ranking was wide receiver 14 in January of this year. And I know like situations have changed yeah, and everything, yeah. but... I do think his ceiling is higher than a top 20 name. I'm not saying it will happen. I think 20 is safe. But I, th I think the community has showed us that the yeah, ceiling is higher. I think and 20 is safe. By the way, well. like, I don't understand why the consensus is betting on Rice to be the odd man out already. Because if you look at adjacent values, Xavier Worthy is wide receiver 28. And he is three tiers higher on KTC than Rasheed Rice. I don't think there should be that big of a gap. I, I like Worthy. Look, I'm, I'm not ruling out Worthy of being like the next dude. I know everyone thinks he's the next Tyreek, but that's not like the most likely outcome. The most likely outcome is he's somewhere around Hollywood Brown, um, which means Rasheed Rice will still have a really important role. So I don't know, man. How many times you get a discount to play, you know, to, to buy the wide receiver connected to Patrick Mahomes that helped him win a Super Bowl the previous year? I, Sure. I'm not sure you'll ever have that again without legal issues. And <laughs> without legal issues, what, with no legal you know issues. You know I mean? right. so as I long as the guy is buying Papa John's I, I, pizza. I, I, thank you for the pizza, but <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh, look, I understand. Uh, I think it's just really difficult for a lot of people to understand what's going to be happening going into the season. And I'm not. I get it. And it's I'm difficult. not sure if somebody is going to because we're also projecting that that production in that second half when those four or five games to go out for the rest of the season, hopefully when he comes back or just a glimpse of that in 2024 where the situation seven games, are you talking about when rice became the starter? It was like, um, I was talking about, I was talking about yeah. after, after the buy was that. Yeah. Seven, yeah, yeah games. seven games, you know, it's a good sample size. It man. is, it is, it is a good sample size. And I think there's still, there's still question marks there because the situation is completely has drastically changed. Adding two yeah. wide receivers here that instantly, or well, at least one that you know that can produce on the fields, and the other one you're hoping to produce on the fields. Yeah. So I, I let me understand. ask you this, and this is someone I want something I want to ask everyone, but clearly I'll get your reply as well. Sure. If you knew that Rice was going to be suspended four games, how would you value Xavier Worthy and Rasheed Rice in Dynasty? If you knew that right now, I told you four games they'll be suspended. Who would you have higher than the other? I would still have them. I would have actually Xavier and Rice close to each other, and I and I value Hollywood a little bit lower. So personally. you'd have Worthy the highest of these these names. Yeah, I would have him the highest okay. of them because of by the way because of the capital and because of what I'm expecting. I just want to throw in this little sprinkle. I know the Rasheed Rice guys out there like me would have been loving these reports and probably took way too much stock in them. Uh, <laughs> every report out of camp is that Rasheed Rice is freaking dominating, man. Like every re report is like. Yeah. He was the best player on the field. Uh, he dominated targets. He got into the end zone, all that. And I know it's just camp. Like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but yeah. it is good to hear. Um, it would be worse to hear, like, he's dealing with stuff legally. And, by the way, he's out of shape. You know, like, that, that would be tough. <laughs> um, but for me, if I can send any second in any future class, it's gone. I think Rasheed I Rice. think the second, this, this is what I would say. I think the second I would do as okay. Rasheed Rice. But I'm only doing, because I said earlier in the beginning of the take, I'm only doing it for a first. Like we said here, a yeah. late first plus an early second in, in a package. Or an early second. Uh, or, early. yeah, late first. I'm happy to do that. But a, okay, a, so a, you're, a, you're a, a sell for a first. You're a buy for a second. For a second, yeah, because I'm not selling him for a second. All right. Uh, yeah. We got two more 
names that are there. Oh boy. Maybe the most highly questionable names in Dynasty right now. But before we get to them, we gotta let you know that if you want your Dynasty team reviewed by Badaki and myself on a live stream, then it's very simple. All you gotta do is become a Mother Flocker member with right. the promo code LAND. We'll have a look at where you stand in your league. Maybe some moves that we would advise you to take. What direction you should move forward with your, you know, give you a reality check. Hey, you you should go out and try and win right now. Or, hey, maybe it's time to hit the reset button. We yep. can do all that for mm -hmm. you on a live stream. Also, if you play best ball or redraft, we are going to release a draft guide for that here on July 1st. You can see a little Sheesh. preview where we essentially project out every single team for you. Every single team, every single conference, every target, snap, rushing attempt the whole will thing. be measured in our rankings for you on that draft guide that releases July 1st. So if you want all that, become a mother flock. Remember with the promo code land, check out the pinned comment. But next name is a, another controversial name. Another controversial one. Yeah. And he has had an off season of rising up rankings. And I think this is where he will settle. So we need to decide if we're in or out. Okay. Zamir White of the Las Vegas Raiders. Okay. Yeah. On KTC, he's the RB20. Mm -hmm. Um, which which is pretty high, I will admit. Yep. On Flock Fantasy Community, he's the RB21. I have him as my RB23. You have him as? Yeah, I have him RB24, so I'm really close with okay. you there. At I'm the lower. moment, baseline value is the 206 in 2024 or a 25 second, which I like that a little bit better than the 206 this year. But mm -hmm. are you buying, selling, or holding? Let me know here in three, two, one. You're okay. buying. I am okay. buying. I'll tell you why. Um, look, I, I get the concern. I just think he's going to freaking dominate touches. This year. <laughs> he is going oh, no. to get worked into the ground. Uh -huh. Like he is set to feast this year. We all know volume is king. You have to see like a huge workload to have any chance of being a top 12 name for the most part, unless you're a freak like Devon Achan. But let's look at like 2023 just as an example, okay? I looked at the top 12 finishes and I looked at their per touch basis, which by the way is carries and receptions, okay? okay on a per game basis in 2023. CMC at 21 and a half. Then I'll just go from one to 12, 17, 19, 19, 15, 18, 21, 18, 16, 15, 19, 65. I'm, I'm, I'm not a rapper. But I'm not a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. Keep going. Watch out for the mixtape. <laughs> uh, top 12 average that out averaged out around 18 touches per game. So if you wanted to be a top 12 running back, you would have to have averaged out around at least 18 touches per sure. game around that area. Sure. Zamir White, we got to see him as an RB1 for four games from weeks 15 to 18 when Josh Jacobs went down with an injury. In those four games, he averaged 23 plus touches a game, which is more than any running back in the top 12. Now, clearly, if you look at that top 12, he would be the least talented name of any of those guys. And I'm not saying he's going to finish top 12. I'm not sitting here saying he's going to have 20 plus touches per game because he did it in a four game sample size. But what I am saying is what we know about Antonio Pierce is that the dude wants to run the ball down your throat. Sure. No pause, mm -hmm. straight facts, send it. Okay. <laughs> like it, the dude wants to establish the run, wants to pound it on the ground. And it's the same coach that he got 23 touches per game last year with. Yeah. Coach mm -hmm. Speak has been fantastic. He's been talking the guy up. He's been putting Alexander Madison in a box, calling him a death piece. Um, so I definitely get like where people are coming from, but volume is the heart of a running back, right? Yeah. But that's obviously fair. it's not everything. Volume isn't everything, it's the heart, but you still need like that network of blood vessels to keep the body moving. You mm -hmm. need you know you need to know what offense you're in. You need to know that your role in that offense, how talented you are, and how many receptions you'll get. All that's important, mm -hmm. but it all starts with volume. So yeah, I think you got a chance to get a guy that you know can can finish top fifteen this year with the volume that he's gonna see. So I, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that, I'll, especially if I'm a competing team. I would say this, and it, I don't believe that if he finishes as a top fifteen running back his value is going to change drastically. I don't think going into next year, people are going to say, I'll give you a 24, a 25 or 26 first for Zemir White. That is not going to be the case. I don't believe that. And we've seen that in the past. We've seen that with, for example, I, and I know a lot of people have, are on two different pages here when it comes down to, to this thought process that I'm going to bring, but it was really similar to Alexander Madison last I'm year. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, because hey, let's, let's talk about uh, it. Because look, 
La- and I'm not talking about whether he was the best running back on the ground. I'm talking about the situation that the situation that the fancy community is painting right now on Zamir White and his value. Remember last year at some point in time, how Alexander Madison, whether it was in redraft or in dynasty, he was they were rising, he was rising up rankings. Why? Because like you said earlier, volume and opportunity is key. All that is the same exact thing that's happening with Zamir White. Now, Zamir White. Granted, he was probably more efficient than Alexander Madison, but the difference is Alexander Madison was going to get the work on the ground and in the air. Here, coming into this year, the 2025 class we already are talking about. Last year, we weren't talking about the 24 running backs. We were talking about the 24 quarterbacks and wide receivers. So I think, I believe, Zimir White is easily replaceable as much as you know, I was I liked him. They call him Zeus coming out of college, et cetera, et cetera. He was a five-star recruit. That's all great. Coming into the situation that the community is currently painting, there is no way in my mind that his value is going to rise. So I'm going to be taking what I can potentially get right now. Because, yes, if he does finish in the top 10, he has to be one of the most efficient running backs. He has to no, be... He uh, to be to get to get a first round to be a first round draft pick, nah. Uh, you mean to get a first round for him? I'm talking about a first round, like if for his value to significantly rise and to be solidified as a first round draft pick in 25 or in 26. I I personally believe he has to finish as a top 10 running back. He has to be a, the most efficient running back, and even if he does get it, let's just say he gets a contract extension like Alexander Madison, he gets a two year contract extension. People are getting excited. That still doesn't negate yeah, the opportunity of this 2025 class that can easily take over his take over his. So his, there should um, be something uh, that should be said mm-hmm. for buying a player at a good price. That mean that you know you're okay with getting the production, but maybe you don't get a first round pick out of him. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I think sure. there's a chance if you if you buy Zamir White right now for a second round pick, he gives you a top 20 season. If he gives you a top 20 season, to me that means the Raiders like the guy. That means they're continually feeding him, and, and he looks okay. Mm-hmm. And that means you're not going to get him cheaper this time next year. I, I know, like, what if they draft a running back? How many years do we do that, man? Like, let's be honest. <laughs> we do it every single time. How many time. years do we do that? And how many years this do we get a wrong? This is the year. You're, you're proving my point, though. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, every year we're like, this is mm-hmm. the year where the running backs are going to get screwed over. This Sell your running backs. Everyone's in danger. Danger, danger, danger. Straight and then danger. it's like, uh, nobody was impacted, actually. So uh, we're sorry about that. But like, we haven't had the conversation. We, do that? You, we haven't had the conversation of a running back class like we I, had this I hear before. You. Right now, I am projecting that this will be one of the best running back classes since 2018, 2017. Sure. So whenever the year Dalvin Cook came out. So I, I definitely hear what you're saying. But it doesn't automatically mean that everybody's in danger. Like some players could no, get injured. And, and, some and, and, players and, might and, not be who they were. Mm-hmm. I'll just say quickly, I get the comparison. I think the Alexander Madison situation is the perfect like reason that Zamir White isn't already in the teens, you know, in, in, in rankings. And the difference between those two is drastic. Like not even close between Madison and Zamir White, in my personal opinion. First off, Zamir White was a five-star recruit. Like, he has that true special pedigree. Like, this is not some scrub. He's dealt with some injuries, but he's got that pedigree, and he's been always hiding behind the Georgia system, just like James Cook was, where you don't dominate that backfield. you got to wait for your chance in the NFL. Um, and the difference is Alexander Madison sucks ass, like, respectfully. Not that that's, we that's not what people were saying last year. I, I was I, we no, went no, two different pages. You. We went two different pages on Alexander Madison. No, like, let, let me let me uh-huh. say, no one was saying last year, Badaki, that Alexander Madison was a good running back. No, everyone was saying he's going to thrive off of volume. Exactly. And to be fair, he got a lot of volume. But what we didn't put into that equation was how bad he truly has been. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at Madison, the two years before he became the starter, he was averaging three point seven yards per attempt. As a reliever back, the red, su- the red the red flags were there. I mean, you got Zamir White last year versus the Chiefs. Was it were the Chiefs the best defense in the NFL last year? No, the Giants were. The, okay, sure. Well, they were top five, <laughs> right? Like whatever. Talking. Versus I those agree. Chiefs, he he had 145 yards, averaged six and a half yards per carry, and as a starter, averaging well over four and a half yards per carry, almost around the five mark. So I get where people's concerns are, but the difference is when Zamir's had his opportunities, he's been good. When Madison has opportunities, he has been completely average, completely replaceable. 
And the the difference between Madison starting with the Vikings and Zamir starting with the Raiders is the identity of those two teams are wildly different. Wildly different. Sure. The Kirk Cousins led offense last year. Let's throw the ball as much as we can to all these weapons that we love. The difference in, in Las Vegas is we're going to run the ball as much as we possibly can until the running back that we have breaks or shuts down. And by the way, the four games that he played, he averaged, um, I think, like three and a half targets per game. Full season, if he averages that, he would get around 55 targets a game, which is enough to, to have him in that like top 15 conversation. So I get it, but uh, Dylan Lobb doesn't scare me. I, Madison I, I, certainly doesn't scare me, and my, I think they're completely different situations. I think my biggest point here is that his value is not going to rise. And if it does, let's just say it does rise. It is not going to be. We, we said it here. We have it in, in our script here. He's currently valued as a 24-206 or 25 second. I do not believe that is going to get any higher next year, even with that projected, like you said, top top 15 running back. I, okay. I don't see that happening. And I think that's why I'm a sell now. Let me ask you this, though. A second next year, in my opinion, is nowhere near worth a second this year. So you're assuming. Sure. I, I, I think. I don't want to speak for yeah, you. But I yeah. think people are assuming that, well, look at what I got in the second this year. That's an outlier. 100%. What we saw this year in this draft, not common. I mean, what if you are worried about sending that second and you decide not to send it? You get the 208 and you're like, damn, the second's kind of weak this year. Sure. Uh, well, that's the yeah, thing Madison's take. still worth a second, but I didn't get a year of production from him. Like, it's okay to pay for a year of production and know that that guy's probably still and worth a second. I, I, I'm 100% agreeing with you. The production, if you want to pay for him, if you're a win now team, I think this is great. In a dynasty perspective, if I'm rebuilding, if I'm doing a dynasty startup right now, I'm not I'm not going out and drafting Zamir White with tremendous confidence or like drafting him I, as I a top it. eight, as a top six pick in, in your dynasty startup. I'm talking about if you have sure. him on your roster right now and you want to get some value out of him and you're not a, a win now team, Zamir White is a perfect sell. Obviously, based on your situations, no question about it. So definitely keep that in mind when you're listening to this take that it, it really does depend on your situation. And if, yeah, a thousand percent, I'm a win now team. I need a running back. I'll take Zamir because I believe, I do believe he can easily be a top 25 running or top 20 running back. I just don't believe his value is going to rise going into next year. And every single and time think, we think, think we, we want to normalize, pivot. I think we should normalize that being okay. Like buying a player at a price point that's no question reasonable. That's not going to drastically move up rankings. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I remember last year with Madison through the hype. Like, at some point, some people were sending first-round picks for Madison. It wasn't common, but some people were doing pick swaps. That is not happening with Zamir at all. Like, not even close. His, his value is not even near a first-round pick right now. No one's even considering it. Second or, or I'm out is what it feels like. So I would say the 206. Super flex I would just say this. I, I personally like the 206 in, mm -hmm. in 2024 class. Obviously, it's not going to be the same in 25 like you mentioned. But at the moment, if someone's offering you the 204 to the 207, I think that is a phenomenal value. That's Ricky Pearsall, Xavier Leggett. Those are first-round wide receivers. Man, Michael Penix can be there. Um, mm -hmm. Jalen Polk. We've seen some of these, some of those guys go in that range. I think that's a perfect flip for somebody that you can. Once and that's that's mm -hmm. the thing. Sorry to jump in. I, I I think some of these are fake prices. Some of these are fake rankings. You have to sure. decide. Like, if someone had the two hundred six, would they actually? Like, is that actually the price point, or is that what KTC says? Like, you're on the board, and all those names are there. You really think in a draft you can send? You know, Zamir for that pick. I think it's more like the two hundred eight. Sure. So, would you onwards. do that? Would you do Blake Corm, Jalen Wright? Uh, yeah, or... I would take a shot on Zamir because I know he's going to start this year. Okay. Okay. Just, just wondering because yeah. I think there's a lot of you know Jalen Polk, a uh, uh, Jermaine Burton. People love you know yes. so Adonai Mitchell and um, all those players that I love. Mm -hmm. And you can make a case they're more talented, but I know at least I'm going to know if that pick paid off this year. I'll sure. know if I burnt it or if it or if it's really paid off. So yeah, that makes sense. Um. All right. Moving on to the last name here. Tank Dell. Sweet baby Tank Dell. Sweet um, baby Tank Dell. KTC wide receiver 21 on Flock Fantasy wide receiver 27. I have him as a wide receiver 18. Yes. You perfect. have him as your wide receiver. Wide receiver 18 as well. We're on the same so page. So currently, there. same value as Devon Achan on KTC, the 108 range in 24 in Superflex or an early to mid first in 2025. So based off that price point, are you buying, selling, or holding? Let me know here in three, two, one okay. all right we got agreement two agreements Harmony. two disagreements there we go look for me 
I think we have to understand. I think uh, let's just go straight to the elephant in the room. It's Stephon Diggs. A lot yes. of people are worried about Stephon Diggs, and this is why it's you're seeing. Elephant. Yeah, this is why you're seeing the value drop in the community on Keep Trade Cut and on in our Flock Fantasy website here. One of my biggest conversations when it comes down to Stephon Diggs is that this is the way I'm envisioning it and projecting this to be is a bridging landing spot. I don't see Stefan Diggs being here for the foreseeable future. And at the moment, as my wide receiver 18, this is a perfect value compared to the community. And there can be an argument, like Zach has always said, there could be an argument for wide receiver one for either Nico, Stefan Diggs, and Tank. Come before the signing, before the signing of Stefan Diggs, that was already the conversation with Tank Dell and Nico Collins. After this year, specifically, after 2024, as I am projecting Stefan Diggs to no longer be on this team, you're going to be getting a projected wide receiver one or wide receiver two at this price point, 20, wide receiver 21 or 27 in the community for the 108 or, an early, or a mid-25 first in 2025. We saw what he did so, in the second half of the season as well. Which I Can I just say, as as much as I agree and I'm buying Tank Dell, mm -hmm. I am personally the one in this scenario who is constantly not ruling out Stephon Diggs, not ruling him sure. out to be the wide receiver one. I know you are. I'm not ruling him out to stay in Houston after this year. I know that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm, I'm saying that is because guess what? You got a rookie on a quarterback contract, uh, a rookie quarterback contract with CJ Stroud. You can do that. You, you can sign Stephon Diggs and Nico Collins and keep Tank Dell. You can sign Diggs to another year, another two-year extension, whatever you feel, the, the D-hop contract that Tennessee had. You can do that because you your can. quarterback is cheap you and your other wide receiver is cheap in Tank Dell. So I'm not ruling that out. I'm not ruling out Diggs being the number one on this team this year. I'm not ruling him out being the number three. I think they all have a good case. And, you know, <laughs> I will make the case for Tank. I know you're about to do the same, but mm -hmm. from week eight onwards, it's a small sample size, but that's when he finally became a starter after the bye week. And from that time onwards, the dude dominated. I mean, over 20 points per game. Yep. Uh, like 83% of the snaps, over nine targets per game. You know, what does he do if it's six to seven targets per game this year? I'm not sure. But what I do know is I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, one, because we've seen it on the field. Two, because he's definitely going to be there for C.J. Stroud's contract. No we don't question. have to ask that. Mm -hmm. And three, they already have that chemistry. It's already inbuilt chemistry. They love each other off the field. They're on podcasts together. You think it doesn't matter? Then go talk to Puka Nakua and Robert Woods when Matthew Stafford came to Los Angeles and who was having breakfast with them. Right? Shout out so to them. Cooper I Cup. think it does matter. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to lower expectations for, for Tank. But if you buy Tank here, I'll say this. If you buy Tank here for this price and Diggs does move on, then you will have done at a discount. No question. And I and that span as well. Wide receiver three, weeks eight to twelve. Those are before he got injured and he broke on a, his on a per game basis, the wide receiver five. So sometimes yeah. like the finish can be fluky because some yeah. and, and, and have a bye week. And, and a wide receiver five is perfect. I mean, that's still up there as a top five wide receiver within that span. And I think that's exciting here. Yeah. And we have to we have to realize that it, one of my things as well, and I close with this, and maybe we can end the video there. A Stephon Diggs is coming from a 140 target per game with no one around him. The best wide receiver around him for the past couple years was what this past Gabe year's Davis. yeah Gabe Davis Shakira Shakira. He didn't he hasn't had um he hasn't had other people to take opportunities away from him and. Well about that he did in minnesota in minnesota, good minnesota yes but he really catapulted with josh allen and with the buffalo bills and this is what, what if i told you in minnesota at the age of 25 in 2018 alongside adam thielen he had 149 targets sure that'd be shocking to you wouldn't it it, it, it would <laughs> that's, be that's shocking to me to, that to was read right that now was seven years ago what 20 not seven years ago but i'm telling um, you he has done it alongside look, some like at that point adam thielen was one of the top 12 wide receivers in the game back no, in and i'm not and i'm not disagreeing i just think that that was a different time and we're coming into here where he's a little bit older he was more nimble then at the time sure. adam thielen i'm pretty sure was also missing a lot of time remember there was a lot of inconsistency with adam thielen i'm not sure what he did that year specifically but yes i, uh, I do was agree very good he had 153 targets i do agree almost that almost 1400 yards <laughs> i do agree he was very good alongside that him. adam thielen 
yes, that can be a conversation. I just don't think that is something that we can see coming into this year with that one that one year out of his whole career. And but yes, you know what, Badaki, you can make that same case for anyone there. Sure, you could because say the everyone same thing for Nico because everyone you could say the has same gotten thing for that, Tank. and that's why in a dynasty perspective, I'm going with the buy because like you like you mentioned, you know that Tank he's, is going to be there. It's going to be there, and yeah. he's young. You know that Nico Collins got the contract extension, and he's sure. going to be there with C.J. Stroud. The question mark is Stephon Diggs. If today Stephon Diggs, we got a message notification: Stephon Diggs signed a three year contract extension with the yeah. Tennessee Titans or with the the Houston Texans, and is going to be on this team because he wants to retire there. We'll, yeah. we'll, we got to restart which, this video. This, we're scratching this. Totally, which you which know? won't happen because obviously they restructured it to a one-year deal before he got there, or yeah. when he got there. But, sure. you know, I, I definitely hear what you're saying for sure. Um, but like I said, I think you can make the case for either way. I guess we, what you're making the point of, which is a good point, is control the controllables. You know, yep. like the uncontrollable, you can't control. But you know Dell will be there. You yep. know Nico will be there. So mm -hmm. I, I, I get what you're saying. But all right, that's it. Hope you liked it. We appreciate y'all. Uh, do us a favor, hit the like button, subscribe if you like the content. We'll see you soon. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.